Hi, uh, this is Mark Nejma from Newsweed.com. Uh, sorry for the delay. I had crazy times traveling. And, uh, you know, I, I, I went to BNGO on Friday and I uh, interviewed uh, Eric and uh, trying to get some answers about the company. Uh, I have an extension layout because I think what I'm about to say is really important. First thing I'd like to say is I would like to thank um, all the people at BNGO that I met. Uh, which was only a few people, uh, and Eric for seeing me. Um, I was greeted by Stephanie Cox at about 9 a.m. Uh, the meeting was quite extensive. Uh, Eric Homeless was immediately available uh, when I arrived. Um, I left uh, quite a while after that. Uh, and uh, we walked to the conference room first, and then Eric changed his mind and walked over, me over to uh, an area that passed some lab people, as well as um, uh, brought me over to the Sapphire machines. Um, uh, Eric um, then started to talk to me, and uh, there were about six people in white lab coats that were uh, at the uh, machines, and um, they were putting something in test tubes. Um, there was not any walls between us, so it was not a clean lab. Uh, at the time, Eric's mask was down. My mask was like uh, down and up at the same time. Eric walked me to the area where there were three sapphire machines. They were lined up side by side and seemed to operate, uh, be operating and functioning at the time. I was asked, I asked him to walk me through how these work, and I wanted to get a demonstration. Eric said that they have to take blood and separate the DNA. Uh, it's a difficult process so that it was uh, stretched out and that it was uh, a difficult process. So you cannot just take blood and put that sample in the machine. The sample has to be prepared. I said, okay, fine. Um, so, um, so we moved on and I asked, well, how long does it take? Uh, and Eric said, it varies and it could take a while. Gives, it gives me kind of a vague air and then tells me that I would I would not understand. We then moved to talk more about the machine. I asked how long it takes to do the test. Eric said that it usually takes 24 to 48 hours. For cancer, it would take a week sometimes. I told him that I was diagnosed with colon cancer. I asked if I should be tested with the Sapphire machine, and he said no. I said, okay. Eric then started speaking in more scientific terms and started to confuse me a bit. I told him I wanted the facts the, in layman terms. He said, well, let's go to the conference room. We get to the conference room and Eric goes to the whiteboard. I had contact Mr. Investlop and two other investors that had some questions. I made a list of these questions and I was set to ask every question. Uh, let me tell you what the list of questions were, basically. Uh, one said, well, what is the state of the FDA? Have, has BNGO applied yet? If so, when, uh, which disease or institutions will be the adoption with first? That was a question uh, from one gentleman in New York and one gentleman from UK. Uh, will it be cancer or rare disease? Uh, then I said, well, what area will drive consumable rev revenue? Uh, consumable, consumable revenue presently uh, is $500, when will it drive down to 100 Anyway, I was asking these questions in between, and I couldn't get an answer because Eric was up at the board and just constantly kind of avoiding the questions. Uh, another question is, will BNGO have a big chance to be in a mainstream adoption in the UK? Uh, I did not get an answer to that, so we moved on. Uh, Eric was at the whiteboard and started getting into the basis of karyotyping fish and others. He talked to me as a teacher would talk to me. I interrupted and told him, hey, I'm an investor. I needed to ask specific questions and get specific answers. He began to get irritated and told me several times I did not understand. Uh, as I presented each question, Eric kind of avoided an answer, didn't, didn't give me any answer at all. And I asked a big question. When, when will the FDA approve BNGO? Did BNGO apply for FDA approval? Eric stopped, state, started to get very animated and said they would not apply for FDA approval. I asked, 
how would you ever scale this if the focus was not diagnostic? He told me there are 3,900 labs that could use OGM. And of those, there were maybe 100 people that made their decision. That's what his focus was, equipment purchase. He felt that there was, uh, that is where scalability would come from. I stopped Eric there and said, so to get those labs to make the decision to buy a machine, wouldn't it be better to drive the message from people that are focused on extending their life or their children or themselves? Eric said strongly, no, never uh, will the technology be driven by people. He doesn't want the general public to, uh, to, to drive to the laboratories and ask for the, uh, the lab test with OGM. Eric said, no, no way. People need carrot typing fish and others like yourself that has cancer. OGM is not for general population. I asked Eric if he felt he had paid too much for the software company. He said, no. I said, well, is, is this going to look bad on earnings? Eric said, what do you mean? I said, well, if you had $329 million in the third quarter, you spent $20 million in the third quarter, I'm assuming your costs are extremely high for the fourth quarter since you have made that purchase. I stopped. I said, the share price is way down. Your new employees have stock options. Are you afraid some of them might leave the company? I was really getting perplexed and beginning to think I was getting the runaround when he wouldn't answer. I stopped him. I said, by the way, by the way, why did you not announce earnings uh, yet? Usually we can expect earnings by one and a half months after close. Eric, when is the earnings date? He said, as a growth company, they have early reporting. I said, Eric, so when is the earnings? He says, I don't know. I guess mid-March. I said, okay. I asked Eric, how much cash do you have <clears throat> Do you have now? He did not know. I said, well, you know, doing the math, if you had 329 and then you spent 20 and then you spent another 50 on the, the uh, company, I said, you know, you can't just state that you had 329 million at the end of the fourth quarter and we don't know how much your earnings uh, are going to be based on the expenses. I mean, I'm not sure what is happening exactly. I said, are you friendly with your CFO? What is he saying? What if he leaves? Eric said that he knows that they are agreed and, and are in for the long haul. It's not a two-year term. Ten years, uh, Shippy and others know ten years. I said, okay. Doing the math, how much cash will you have? Eric said, hey, we had $329 million in the third quarter. Again, I said, yeah, $329 minus $50 million, plus you were spending $20 million. That's like $260 million. That will never look good. What will your employees think? I mean, adoption is not much right now. He said that 168 machines installed. I said, hey, as I said, adoption should have been 40 machines in the fourth quarter. And I was hoping that 600 machines in 2022. If this was truly a great innovation, the results are not showing that it's good. He says that, I don't know, me, Mark, you don't know what you're talking about. And went back to the whiteboard, said that take that 3,900 labs and multiply it by 10. Again, I started to get very uncertain about Eric and his awareness. I said to Eric, you know, many people are saying you should step down as CEO. What do you think? He said, oh, that's ridiculous. I said, Turek, I know you were involved in another nano company that Ann Laurie was involved in. Ann Laurie runs a children's hospital in Chicago. I understand she's a very good person. Does Ann Laurie have a Sapphire machine? I mean, you work close to her. He said, he really does not know her. He did not work close with her. Ann Laurie, that is. I said, so she does not have a Sapphire machine? He said, no, she does not have one. I suggested it would be good if we had a list of where the Sapphire machines are. Eric avoided that question. Do you know the guy from Chicago that says you cannot be trusted? I said, I think he's a professor at Western Illinois University. He said, oh, yo, his name is, and then rattled off a couple of names, which I'm not too sure what the names were. 
I moved to tell Eric, hey, do you have a family that could get sick? He said, I have a 12-year-old daughter. I said, Eric, I bought BNGO because I thought your company could determine whether there was a difference between people, that some could get COVID and others could not. I mean, I thought your OGM was about people and saving lives. Has your tech ever saved anyone's life? He said, no, but I guess laboratories might find some info. I said, 23andMe collected all that data. Now they are trying to put in it to good use. Isn't that a good thing? He said, that data is, is, is vague and did not give an answer. I told Eric, why don't you want the general public behind this? He said, that is not what being zero is about. We are not about the patient. We are about the lab. I said, I beg of you, Eric, close your eyes and think of your daughter. If she's ever sick, that's what you want to protect her. He said, he then jumped up and said, thanks for coming and escorted me out the door. I was very disappointed with the information that I received. Uh, I have sold all my stock. Um, I do realize that the stock is up. I'm glad for everybody there. But quite frankly, um, I don't have any faith in BNGO anymore, not based on what I saw. Uh, thanks for your time. My name is Mark Nedgemont from Newsweed.com. My number is on the uh, on the site, you know, on my YouTube channel. Uh, I don't know what to say except that uh, to me, I thought that BNGO was all about helping patients, and as it turns out, it's not. So thanks for your time, and uh, good luck to all. God bless, and uh, I hope everybody makes money in the market. Thanks so much. Um, I don't know what else to tell you, but that's everything I got from the meeting. Thanks so much. Bye.